G'day folks, today I've come down to the Lower Ovens River with my Deeper Pro Plus Fish Finder. I'm just going to have a few casts, create a small bathymetric map, and I'm just going to have a look at what's lying beneath. From here, where I'm looking in front of me here, the river is quite open and quite flat. We don't know whether there's any likely fish holding structure and stuff underneath or not, so we're going to have a look with the Fish Finder. I've got to say, in a way I hope there's nothing under the water here because there's a rope swing right there and I'd like to think that if I was jumping off that swing there wouldn't be logs under the water. We don't know for sure, that's what we're going to do, we're going to check it out with the Depot Pro Plus and see what we can see and then I'm going to explain to you how you can store your data from this session in the cloud so that you can access it on your home PC anytime you like. Rightio now, the screen could be hard to see here because of the glare. At the moment it says Deeper is disconnected. By default the app will be in standard mode, which is just standard use, use as a fish finder or a depth sounder. So that if I cast this out now and turn it on, it will tell me what's on the bottom, the depth, the structure and etc. But I want to create a bathymetric map that I can save online. Now at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about how to save that map onto your own private online maps that you can access on your home PC, but I'll get into that at the end. First we need to turn it on. To turn the deeper unit on, down the bottom you'll see deeper is disconnected. What you need to do, put it in the water. The water actually turns it on. Now, what you can do is hit settings, go into manage deepers, I've got it on set deeper manually. If you have it set automatically, it'll automatically set, but I've got it set to manually. So I've got to hit connect. Now it's going to look for it. There we go, it's already found it instantly. So you can go into settings, you can have it to, to connect to deeper manually or to connect automatically. I've got it set to connect manually. Where it's sitting there now, it's saying 0.7 meters or 70 centimeters deep, and the water surface temperature is 30 degrees, which is very hot, but that is right on the surface. So, what I want to do, if I just use it like that, tell you what I'll do, I'll make one cast, so that you can see how it looks as a fish finder. I'll cast it out, just out there a little bit. Now, out there, it is 4.1 meters. So there's a lot of water out there. There's 12 feet of water out there. Right where that's landed, we can see there's a little bit of structure on the bottom. Look, just a log or something laying on the bottom now. It's smoothed over a bit. Now, I'll reel that in a bit. You can see it's coming up. 3.4, 3.3, 3.1. Look here. Look at the sounder there. You can see there's a, uh, you can see there's a bit of structure right there at about the... Uh, the two meter mark. So two meters underwater, six feet underwater there, there's obviously a log or something. It's showing fish up. I've got the fish icons turned on. Whether there's fish there or not, I'm not gonna uh, not gonna guarantee. There could very well be. There could be carp laying under there. They most likely won't be our Murray Cod because they like to lay under the logs and that can be very, very hard to detect on even the best of fish finders or depth sounders. But fish that swim out in the open, such as carp and stuff, can. So we can see there, we're back to 1.5, 1.4, 1.3 metres. Now, what I want to do, that's standard mode. Let's flick it into bathymetric map mode. What we've got to do is go up to the right hand side here where it says settings. Touch on the settings. Go down to sonar. Go to sonar mode. It says standard, I touch that. I change it to onshore GPS mode, which is available with the Pro Plus only. Put it into onshore, onshore GPS mode. Go back out, and what we'll see, the screen will have split into two. You see that? It's now got, it's still going to show me the fish finder stuff over here that it normally would, but it's also going to show me a bathymetric, uh, a map on this side. Now, up the top of this map, you'll see that little red emblem flashing up there. That is a satellite, it's got to pick up satellites, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cast this out into the middle there, out in the open, away from these big trees that I'm standing under, and that'll just help that detect satellites. And this may take a while. You'll see it's already relaying back the data to tell me that it's four meters deep. The better the satellite strength, the better your map is. There we go, it's just gone green, and now it's flashing red again. 
what I have found with the GPS data in the, the deeper is that open water is so much better. In rivers where there's lots of trees covering the water, they can be the satellite signal can be weak and a little bit uh, not as consistent. Obviously, the wider and more open the river is, the better the signal is going to be. Right, I've got a locked in green satellite there now, which means it's got a full signal. As it comes under this big tree above me here, it could get a little bit weaker. So, we're in 3.9 metres of water. It's a flat bottom directly under the sounder. Now, it looks like it's a really flat bottom, but that's because the sound is barely moving. The river is very, very low at the moment. So, as I wind it in, one of the first things you'll notice is as soon as I start winding, the bottom of the river will start looking rougher. And that's because as I wind and turn the handle, the sounder just sort of bounces up and down a little bit like that. That's what creates that sort of roughness. But if you look on the left hand side of the screen here now, you can see it's starting to colour in. We're getting a bit of orange in there. That is the bathymetric map being created. Where the sounder is now, it starts coming up. It drops off really deep just out there. And there's a bit of a log near that drop off. If you're watching this from Australia and you're a Murray Cod fisherman, that is the ideal spot to find a Murray Cod. The, an open bit of water like this, where you can't see the bottom, you can't see what's underwater. A steep drop off with a log that no one else can see in the deep water. That's, uh, that's cod country, folks. Right now, I'll cast that back out again and make another section of my bathymetric map. This time I've cast a lot further. Over where that is, it's 2.1 metres over there. So it's shallower over there. The deepest part of this hole is right in the middle. So we'll reel that in. I'll reel that in at a reasonable speed. Just to try and uh, cover a bit of ground. Now it's dropping down to 3.3 metres out there, 3.4, 3.3, 3.1, so it's coming back up again. There certainly is a very deep hole. To find 4 metres of water in the Ovens River this time of the year, in late March, after it hasn't rained for months, that's a very deep bit of water. To put it into perspective, I fished this spot in September, the water was right up on that high bank up there, and I caught an out-of-season Murray Cod and a couple of carp. Rightio, now I'll make another cast. Each one of these casts, what you'll notice, this one's gone out over that side near them logs. Might be just out from them logs, 2.5 metres. Now my green, my um, you'll notice when you cast quite often, the satellite symbol will go from red to green. And that's because when you cast it, it briefly loses satellite. So when you, when it lands, it's always best just to wait a couple of seconds for the satellites to lock back in. Now I'm winding that in. Right where it is now, it drops off. You can see on the sounder here, it's just dropped from two metres down to three and a half metres. There's a steep drop off just out there. Wow. That's actually quite deep. That's very deep. Now over on this side on the bathymetric map side, I can zoom in a little bit. And just give you a better idea of what my bathymetric map is looking like. What I'm going to do is turn my uh, my mobile phone data on. You get a um. You get a sign that says turn the mobile phone data off for a better connection but then when the phone data is off, see, please turn off your mobile data for better connectivity. But the thing is, you don't have the map on the left hand side here when your phone data is off. So, <laughs> it's always a bit of a trade off. If you're creating a bathymetric map, well you sort of want that, uh, that data turned on. Right, yeah, now you can see here that I'm colouring in the river, colouring in my map. It's pretty awkward. It's, I've actually got a really cool rubber fishing rod holder thingy here that goes on my rod, but I forgot to bring it with me today. So I'm now covering water I've already covered, so I'm just going to reel that in really, really fast. 
and I'm going to make a cast a little bit more to the left. Right, now this cast will go to the left a little bit where I haven't already cast just so that I'm not colouring in the spot that I've already coloured in, if that makes sense. Four point three meters of water at the front of that little channel over there, and amongst all them logs. Wow. Four point four, four point six meters. Five meters. I've just hit five meters of water just out there. That is just incredible. Now what I'm going to do when I reel this in, just for, uh, just to give you a bit of an idea, I'm going to walk upstream a little bit, or I might walk downstream a little bit. I'll walk downstream here, just so that the map's got a, a spot different. A lot of people would be scared right about now. My wife and I, when we pulled up here about a quarter of an hour ago, we saw a tiger snake swim off from right here where I'm standing. Now I'm going to cast way down there. Now on the map, this should be a little bit disproportionate because I've come to a different sort of an area. I'll wait for my satellites to turn green. So on the map here, you'll see that there is a uh, there's a new line being created just downstream of where I was. Still two meters. I'm reeling it in, reeling it in. So I'm sort of creating a bathymetric map next to my bathymetric map. And the reason I'm doing that is just to sort of show you the accuracy of this unit, this Deeper Pro Plus unit. So you can see there on the, on the map that I have moved away from the initial point and I'm at a different spot. Now, if I cast over to the left of where I'm standing, over to where I was before, it's going to colour the dots in pretty much. Wait for me green, wait for me red satellite to turn green. There we go, it's just picked up its satellites. Three meters, three point one meters, three point two meters. Too shallow or too deep, and that's because it's right at my feet. There's not much point me doing anymore because that'll make it just boring. So that is how you create a bathymetric map. Remember, as I said, folks, to go into the uh, the settings at the top right-hand corner. Settings, go down to sonar settings, sonar mode. Bathymetric maps is at the bottom one that says onshore GPS mode, which is Pro Plus only. And the top mode is standard mode, and that's what it usually defaults into. So from this exercise, standing here now, I can tell you the deepest spot is just up there. It's around about five metres of water out there, two metres down there, between three and four metres. There's a bit of a channel that runs along just this side of those trees there. There's some really nice structure and a steep drop off right out in the middle of the, of the pool here. So I've not only have I created a, a part map of the read of this area and I say part map because to create a full map I'd have to make a, a half hour video which would bore you all but I've created a part map but I've also found some really nice fish holding really nice looking fish holding spots particularly out in the center of the river there where it's really really deep and over under them big logs because I never realized it was so deep under there unbelievable that is how you create a bathymetric map with the deeper pro plus fish finder now i'm just going to talk to you about how to save it and what to do with the map next right yeah folks now i've just come back to the car we've learned a lot about that waterway but how do i know how to store that information 
First of all, it'll store it in the app. So I can open the deeper app, go back in and look at the map I've just created any time I like. But if I lose my phone or my password or upgrade my phone, I can't do that anymore. I'll lose it forever. So what you can do, you can go to Lakebook. Lakebook is a program that Deeper have developed so that you can upload your your findings, your data like today, to a private place where you can store your information like into a, into a cloud so that if you lose your computer, your phone or anything, as long as you know your login details, you can go back in and look at your maps anytime you like. Some people say to me, I don't see you use your Deeper all the time in your fishing videos. Because you don't really need to, one of the great things about the Deeper is that you can go to places like this, map out an area, have access to the map, you don't need to. If I was to go down there fishing tomorrow, I'm not going to need my Deeper app because I've just been through and found out where all the good spots are. If I'm coming here for the first time, then it's, in, it's an invaluable tool. So there's not a lot of repeat use if you're fishing the same spots all the time, unless you're fishing for species such as carp or trout that don't hold close to the structure and you're actually using the fish finder to find the fish as they're swimming around. So, to go to get your, uh, your information up into the cloud, what you need to do is go into the Deeper app and I could struggle a bit here because I've got no phone service where I am. Go into the Deeper app. Up the top of the app, on the top line there where all the, uh, there's different menus. You've got, you know, camera, weather, notes, etc. You can go to, uh, if you hit history, you hit history, and then it's got the map that you just made was onshore GPS mode. What you can do then, is hit the, uh, the little cloud button at the top right hand corner that'll upload to the cloud automatically it's only 2.2 megabytes that whole video and that'll put that information on lakebook now i like to log in with facebook i'm a facebook user so on my deeper i uh on the lakebook i go to maps dot deepersonar.com maps dot deepersonar.com and then you, I just log in with Facebook and then once I've hit that cloud all my information is transferred from the phone to the cloud it stays on the phone as well but if I lose the phone I don't I don't lose the stuff that's on the cloud so check out Lakebook folks I hope this has helped anybody thinking about buying a deeper or a compact fish finder I hope this has helped you out and just given you a bit of a brief overview of what the deeper Pro Plus is capable of with regards to creating a bathymetric map looking for fish holding structure finding out the depth fantastic invention i just love mine thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video